perseverance is a trait that is much admired in our society, and with good reason. We think that those who, who do not try, who do not try and try again until they succeed, are, are simply bound to fail. While those who work hard and those who persist and who labor unceasingly, who, who hang in, well, those people end up accomplishing a very great deal. That is the way we like to think. And at first glance, it may seem that the Bible appears to agree with us on this. From Jacob wrestling with the angel at the river and refusing to let this much stronger opponent go until he receives a blessing to the Apostle Paul, who despite being imprisoned and stoned and flogged and beaten and shipwrecked and having to endure hunger and thirst and nakedness and rejection. Well, Paul went out to all the known world and preached the gospel so, so to bring to completion the task Jesus had come to do. And then there's our gospel lesson today. Doesn't it seem to suggest the same thing? It seems to be a, a classic example of the link between perseverance and blessing. Between unflagging doggedness and achieving one's goal. Now Luke sets our story today within a context of a challenge Jesus makes to his disciples to do this. Jesus starts off and says, pray always and do not lose heart. That's his challenge. But then his story describes a widow who wouldn't give up until she got what she wanted from an uncaring and unjust judge. And Jesus concludes the story by saying, And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? So on the surface, it seems that the lesson here is clear. Persevere, keep going, keep asking, and you're going to get what you want. You'll end up being blessed. But today, I want to challenge that a little bit. I want to challenge that idea a little bit. In fact, I want to suggest to you that what Jesus is trying to tell his disciples here is something completely different. Now, why is that? Well, to me, it boils down to something quite simple. We believe and place our trust in a God of grace. From start to finish, Scripture is a story of a God who reaches out to us despite our failings, a God who reaches out and touches our lives despite our sins. Did you hear the passage from Jeremiah where he says, I am here now to build up. I'm here to build you up. And this has got nothing to do with what we do. But it has everything to do with what God has done. Jesus says over and over again in the Gospels, I have not come to call the righteous, I have come to call sinners. Well, if we think that we are righteous, we might have a problem then, mightn't we? And over and over again, we are told by Jesus and the apostles that he went to the cross for us. He died for us while we were yet sinners and alienated from him. In other words, while we were Jesus' enemies, he did all of those things. Again, not because of all of our good works, not because of what we have done, not because we have worked hard and persevered. That's not why Jesus did it. Indeed, the essence of the gospel is found in the scripture that says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. So, how can we take this passage of Scripture and assert that if we do something, if we, if we work at praying hard enough, or if we just hang in there and pester God without mercy, then God will just roll over and give us what we want. Do we want the image in our minds of the God we worship and serve to be the image of the unjust judge? 
when I think of this idea that if we just keep going and going and going, that God will give us what we want. Well, that kind of assertion reduces the gospel to a mere matter of works, the very thing that Jesus was fighting against. And it makes a mockery out of any statement that tries to assert that God is loving and giving. Furthermore, because it reduces the gospel to a matter of works, it lays guilt trips on some people and creates pride in others. Some will say, if you try hard enough, God will give you stuff. Look at all that I have. Or they might say, if you don't try hard enough, well, God's not going to listen to you. You will not get what you want or need. Perhaps you've heard things like that. I wonder at times how we can, we who know the one who died for us can say things like that to each other. How can we say things like that to each other and look one another in the eye? Let me tell you a few others that I have heard that go along this route. See if you've ever heard anything like this. People will say to someone who is suffering from illness, well, the problem is you just haven't prayed hard enough. Ever heard that one? Or perhaps you have heard, I know I have, a person say to, to someone who's lost a loved one, well, if you had remembered to pray to God every day, then this wouldn't have happened. I've heard that. Or how about this one? People will say, well, everything I have is because I worked hard and I prayed to God, and that is why I am healthy, wealthy, and wise. Persevere, they say. Friends, I want you to hear this. This idea of persevere and you will be blessed is not the gospel. That is not the good news which Christ came to teach. Now don't get me wrong. Perseverance, fidelity, commitment, hard work are good qualities to have. They will take us far in the world. But those are, while good qualities, that is not the good news that Scripture teaches us. Think about if you were here a few weeks ago. We heard the story of the man who goes to a neighbor at midnight to borrow food for an unexpected guest. Now think of the punchline of that story, how Jesus says that the neighbor will get up and give the man some bread, not because he is a friend, but because of the man's persistence. It sounds like that's what Jesus is saying, right? And think of today's story and of its punchline, how the unjust judge says, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. Does that sound like the God we know? No, it does not. Though both stories sound as if their lesson is persevere and you will be blessed, the reality that Jesus is trying to convey to us is to convey a contrast. He's saying that these individuals, the, the unjust judge and the reluctant neighbor, this is not what God is like. And he is saying that if a corrupt judge and an, if a corrupt and unjust judge and a reluctant neighbor will give you what you want because they're so persistent or whatever, then how much more is God who loves us and is concerned about us willing to answer when we call to him? He's not saying God is like those individuals. He's saying that God is much better and much different and much more grace-filled than those people will ever, ever be. Which leads to the real point today, right? To the reason Jesus told this story, the words with which the story opens and indeed the words with which it closes, to remind you the opening line was this, then Jesus told them a story about their need to pray always and not lose heart. To pray always and not lose heart. And the concluding line is this, I'll 
tell you, God will quickly grant justice to those who cry to him day and night. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? What Jesus is doing here is this. He is calling us to have faith. To trust that God and God's goodness will bring about the justice we all seek. The blessing we all require. And that we should continue in prayer for these things till they happen. It is simply a matter of timing. I heard a story which illustrates how often we confuse God's timing with our own. Perhaps you have thought this way at some point. A small town country newspaper had been running a series of articles on the value of church attendance. This was a few years ago, as you might guess. And one day a letter to the editor was received and it said this. Print this if you dare, because I'm trying an experiment. I have a field of corn which I plowed on Sunday. I planted it on Sunday. I did all the cultivating on Sunday. I gathered the harvest on, the harvest on Sunday. And I hauled it to my barn on Sunday. Now, I find that my harvest this October is just as great of any of my neighbors who went to church on Sunday while I was working. So where was God all this time? I did all my work on Sunday and I got just as much corn as they did and they worked all October. Well, the editor printed the letter. But he added his reply at the bottom. Listen to this. Your mistake is in thinking that God always settles his accounts in October. Now you get that? What he was telling that man was maybe God's not finished yet. That's often our mistake, isn't it? We think that God should act when and how and where we think God should act, right? We think God should act according to our timetable, according to our desire. But the fact is our vision is limited. We are unable to see with God's eyes. We are unable to see all the way from the, the end from the beginning. And so somehow it escapes our minds. Our desire, while often very good, runs against the freedom that God has given for good or ill to all people. Bad things happen, my friends. And sometimes it seems to us that God doesn't care. That God doesn't make a difference in our lives. That justice will not come about. That evil will prevail. That death will have the last word. And that is why Jesus told us to pray always and not lose heart. And that is why he asked, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Persistence in works is not the point here. Rather, persistence in prayer and trusting God's grace being a part of faithfulness to God. That is what this is about. It means refusing to give in to appearances and continuing to trust God and act in God's, that God will act in God's way and in God's time. It may appear that we are alone, yes. It may appear that God does not hear us. It may appear that injustice and evil are prevailing. But faith dares in the face of that to go on praying. It dares to approach the reality that even though we may not be able to see it, we know that God is working and that in the end, God will work it out. Friends, this is what makes people of faith so different from other people. We are willing to live by what we cannot see but believe to be real rather than by what we can see and what the world tells us is real. Many people pray, my friends. And mostly they pray when they are in a mess and they are desperate because they cannot come up with some fast and efficient human 
solution. We talked about this the other week, right? The blue light prayers. When you look in your rearview mirror, and there they are. People pray because they are in trouble. They pray because they cannot figure out any way to help themselves. And when they don't get the answer they expect, when they expect it, their temptation is to simply stop praying. But that's not faith, my friends. That's not faithful living. That's not what Jesus calls us to do. Jesus says instead that we are to pray always and not lose heart. Pray always and not lose heart. God has promised to stand by us and to vindicate us. God has promised a new heaven and a new earth. God has promised to save and deliver those who trust in God, those who are joined to God's people, those who have faith. So the real lesson of today's gospel is not persist and you will get a blessing. The real lesson is found in our reaction to the world around us. In our reaction to our trials and tribulations and to the trials and tribulations of this world. Do we trust God? Do we believe? Do we pray always and not lose heart? Or do we look at this world and think this is all that there really is? And only go to God when we've got nothing else left. And then perhaps abandon God when things aren't going the way we think they should go. Where is the point in your life at which you need to finally let go of your fears? your frustrations, your impatience, your anger, and instead sink down into patient trusting in God's timing and in God's way of working. Where is the point in your life in which you need to trust God to bring about what God has promised? That what God calls us to pray for and to look for and to expect during the time when it doesn't seem to be happening. When the Son of Man comes, Jesus asks, will he find faith on earth? That's the question this parable asks of each of us. May you be blessed in your own answering of it day by day until it is finally answered when he comes again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.